three, two, one. Ah! How's it going, everybody? Dishnet34 here welcoming you to tonight's episode of This Week in Perfect Team. How's it going, everybody? Oh, man, what a week. What a week it has been. And your boy has turned one year older. And yes, I have the Tigers jersey on today. Because why not? It's my birthday. I can do what I want. <laughs> oh, hopefully everybody's having a great week so far. It is absolutely awesome to be here doing the show tonight. On my birthday week, I turned 27 on Monday, which I know some of you cannot believe, but you know what? I wanted to celebrate this. So you know what? I asked, I asked the team, you know what? I've always wanted to do a set of my own. My birthday is coming up on a week that, you know, would be relatively close to my birthday. And, you know, I kind of want to do a set. I want, I want, I would like to do a set. And you know what? For some strange reason, they obliged. I don't know why, but they did. So I will have quite a few cards for you tonight that I personally picked out. They may or may not be good cards. There, there's some good cards. There's some decent cards in there. But either way, there are cards that are going to be coming out tonight. I'm looking forward to showing off all of them. Some of them are some of my personal favorites. Some of them are some legends of baseball. So, I'm looking forward. Colin Kaline. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't think we can get Colin Kaline in the game. That's a whole other way, other thing. <laughs> Alrighty, let's go ahead and get right to it tonight. And we start off with a look at... At the current perfect league standings as of the last half hour, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time tonight. And we have some very, very close division races here in perfect league. We start off with the AC East and the Maryland Fireplaces at 57 and 43. Three and a half game lead over the Denver Highlanders right now. Over in the AC Central... A bit of a seven-game lead for the Portland 69ers over the Winnipeg Go Jets Go. Winnipeg on a five-game winning streak, though. Very, getting a little bit closer. Uh, AC West, the Watertown Herons are up by four games on the Hamsterdam Lake Trout. However, Watertown's lost five in a row coming into this nine o'clock sim. So hopefully, hopefully they get off the schneid there a little bit. And then the AC Maddox, the Jackson Generals, just a half game up on the Circle City Monuments. So that'll be a tight race down to the end. Over in the National Conference, the Durham Los Toros. Look at this. Look at this NC East division up here. Three games separate the top four teams. That is absolutely insane. But Durham Los Toros up by half game on the Fort Worth Frogs, up by two games on San Angelo, and up by three on the Cheeto Cheetahs. In the NC Central, the York Dragons have the largest lead of anybody in Perfect League right now, a 57-42 record. Ten and a half games up on both the Low Country Gators and the Tippecanoe Terrors. A good run here for the York Dragons as of late. Then the NC West, we have another close division race over there. The Chico Bail Bonds Bears are up just a half game on the Utica Blue Sox. Fun race coming up there on three and a half games up on the Star City Emerald Archers. And then finally, in the NC Koufax division, the Seattle Aftershocks are two and a half games up on the Madison Moundsmen. So there are a lot of division matchups that are going to come down right to the wire once again as we end off this per this perfect league season. I see we got some Heron's love in the chat. Oh man, and, and you know what? I've loved, uh, let me just say, before we get into the cards tonight, which we're going to show off the Ellie's in just a little bit, I have loved all of the speculation on what this set is going to be. So I can't wait to show you the cards tonight. 
All right, let's go ahead and start with our LE cards. We have two of them for y'all this evening, and we start off with our 100 copy limited edition card, and it is going to be 85 overall Ryan Braun peak card from the Milwaukee Brewers. Pretty cool card right here. 71 BABIP, 91 power, 67 avoid K, 89 contact, 86 gap power, and 59 I. But look at the VL on this guy right here. 71 BABIP, 107 power, 79 avoid K, 100 contact, 100 gap power, and 69 I. Big, big V left bat right here. And he can play quite a few positions on the field as well. Third base at a 56 position rating. Can play both outfield corners as well. Can play left and right. Um, in terms of defensive ratings, he has 57 range, 54 error, 71 arm, and 52 turn, turn double play on the infield. And meanwhile, in the outfield, he's got 59 range, 85 error, and 79 arm. Very fitting for a corner outfielder as well speed stealing base running not bad at all 73 speed 85 stealing and 79 on the base running now ryan braun bit of a um mixed career um that's just kind of putting it lightly uh but from 2007 to 2020 he hit 296 358 532 with 352 career homers 1154 rbi Rookie of the year in 2007, MVP in 2011, was a six-time All-Star and five-time Silver Slugger in his career. Ryan Braun, 100 copy limited edition card in Perfect Team 23. All right, so there's our 100 copy LE. Let's show off our 25 copy LE of the night. And we're going back to the 90s. For left fielder Moise Alou from the 1993 Montreal Expos, 92 overall. Pretty good card right here. 67 BABIP, 86 power, 87 avoid K, 91 contact, 89 gap, and 67 I. Some very good V left stats as well on this card. 69 BABIP, 77 power, 102 on the avoid K, 93 contact. 105 gap power and 66 I. And he's also a little bit serviceable against righties as well. 67 bad up, 89 power, 82 avoid K, 90 contact, 83 gap power, and 67 I. However, you're getting a little more gap power and a lot more avoid K against lefties, but you're also getting a little more homer power against righties, so a little bit of a give and take right there. Uh, can play both left and right and is technically qualified to learn center field if you so choose. 53 range, 74 error, and 78 arm as well. In terms of speed stealing and base running, has 44 speed, 78 stealing, and 61 on the base running. 1993 season for Moise Alou was a pretty good year. For Mr. Alou, let me just go ahead and find those stats real quick. Just to give you a little context here. I believe this was his third year in the big leagues, but it's only a second full year. 136 games, he hit 286, 344, 83 with 18 homers, 65 RBI, and a 115 OPS+. Plus. Uh, last, this was the last year they stole more than 12 bases as well. He had 17 stolen bases that year. Um, suffered an ankle injury though during the season, so kind of sapped his speed for pretty much the rest of his career. But he had two and a half war this year, plus, little fun fact managed by his father Felipe Alou in the 1993 season before the Montreal Expos were the uh, best team in baseball in 1994 before uh, you know what happened. So there you go, Moise Alou from the 1993 Montreal Expos in Perfect Team 23. Alrighty, let's get right to the content tonight. My birthday set, set of favorites and legends with the set created by uh, yours truly. You know what, I, I, I just want, my, my goal with this set 
mainly was to just kind of have fun with it. You know, reminisce a little bit about players from my lifetime, players that you might have heard of, players maybe from my favorite baseball team, maybe some favorite players of mine from Perfect Team over the years. I just wanted to have a lot of fun with this set. And I, I hope you have as much fun with this set as, as I will. So we're going to go ahead and start off with a guy that is just pure fun. Mainly because all he does is hit dingers. And I am talking, of course, about 50 overall Dave Kingman from the 1979 Chicago Cubs. Basically, the only thing this guy can do is hit dingers. Nothing else. 43 BABIP, 103 power, 33 avoid K, 55 contact, 46 cap power, and 41 I, the embodiment of ball go far. Just the straight embodiment of ball go far in the iron level. He can play left field. He is qualified to learn first and right field defensively. You know, he might be a tiny bit serviceable in left field. What did I think of Kingman's performance? You know what? He just hit dingers. 59 outfield range, 46 error, 64 arm. You're getting a little bit more against lefties than you are against righties, but if you're expecting, like, high average, high on base, you're not going to find it here. You're going to find dingers. And in 1979, boy, did he hit dingers. 288, 343, 613 on the slash line with 48 homers, 115 RBI, and a 146 OPS plus. He was an all-star selection even in 1979, Dave Kingman. Oh my goodness. One of his only, th one of his three all-star game appearances in his career. Had career highs in average and OPS. He led Major League Baseball in home runs. It's absolutely insane. And at one point during the season, playing at home at Wrigley Field, he hit an estimated 550 foot home run. Phew! Like, what? Yeah, apparently, according to Wikipedia, um, pretty much his, that's, that was his third home run during this 23-22 absolute barn burner of a game against the Phillies. Um, and it went on to a third porch roof on the east side of Kenmore Avenue in Chicago, which is a street that kind of tees into Waveland Avenue behind left center field. That's how far he hit that shot which is just absolutely insane. I wish there was video of this. I wish there was video of this that existed because I would have loved to see it. But there you go. Dave Kingman from the 1979 Chicago Cubs is in perfect team 23. Oh, man. All righty. Let's move on to a card that, you know what? I had a lot of fun with back in Perfect Team 20. And if you guys were around during the time of Perfect Team 20, there was one card that I just would not shut up about. And in fact, it kind of became a tiny bit of a meme in Perfect Team 20 for, for how much I used him as a designated hitter, even though he was not a designated hitter. And that, my friends, is 52 overall Tony Cloninger from the 1966 Atlanta Braves. Now, this guy doesn't seem very assuming when you, when you look at the pitching stats here. 62 stuff, 42 movement, 43 control. 
with some pretty decent breaking balls. Fastball, curveball, changeup combo right here. A little bit better against lefties in terms of stuff. You're going to get a little more movement and control against righties as a right-handed pitcher. 91 stamina, 46 hold runner. But what I want to point attention to are his batting stats right there. 51 contact and 73 power. We'll take a look like at, at the full batting stats here in just a second. But Tony Kleiner in 1966, he went 14 and 11 with a 412 ERA. This was not his best season by any stretch of the imagination. 6.2 strikeouts per nine, 4.1 walks per nine. This guy was kind of a mess starting pitcher. Led MLB in wild pitches and walks. Fourth highest war season in his career. But this is what I'm talking about right here. 46 BABIP, 73 power, 43 avoid K, 51 contact, 52 gap power, and a measly 10i. Speed stealing and base running are actually, they're on the mess side, but it's a lot better than it was. 54 speed, 66 stealing, 45 base running. Tony Cloninger is actually very famous in Braves history. He hit two grand slams in one game on July 3rd, 1966 with nine RBI. And those, I believe, are still Atlanta Braves records. So, pretty cool stuff right there. Also, I do believe, in my personal opinion, he is the best V-Left DH in Perfect Team history. In fact, I have a screenshot from Perfect Team 20 that I scrounged up in the last couple of days. This was his Perfect Team 20 card. Look at the V-Left. Now, the contact isn't quite there, because I had to borrow this from somebody who was on the Discord back in the Perfect Team 20 days. This was like literally the only picture that is remains of Tony Cloninger's card in Perfect Team 20. But as you can see, look at the power against lefties on his Perfect Team 20 card. 93 power. I dug the long ball back in 20. I played this guy as my V left DH for so freaking long it became a meme. So... This is a fun card. I hope y'all enjoy this one. 52 overall, Tony Cloninger from the 1966 Atlanta Braves. His eye is a marble. His eye is a little bit of a marble. And, and I agree, that power could absolutely play right now. But you know what? I think this guy might be useful for like no DH tourneys that are out there. So that'd be pretty cool. All right, so we are going out of the iron ranks, and we are going straight to the silver ranks. And we have for you, oh, what's his overall again? 75 overall, Rick Porcello from the Detroit Tigers, a peak card from the Tigers. 67 stuff, 54 movement, 86 control. A little bit better against righties than he is against lefties. This actually isn't a terrible silver card. If you look at it close enough. Has a fastball, slider, curveball, changeup, and sinker. He wasn't a bad pitcher in his career. He was just kind of there. But you know what? He had a decent, he had a decent career for himself. And you got to admire that. He has 81 stamina and 22 on the hold runner now in his career he went 150 and 125 between 2009 and 2020 with a 440 era a 99 era plus in his career finished third in the 2009 rookie of the year voting <sighs> somehow some way frauded the voters into giving him the cy young award winner win in 2016 over my boy justin verlander I am still a fan of Verlander to this day. I wish he got the award. He had more first place votes. Why did the Tampa Bay writers leave him off the ballot? <sighs> you can tell I am not salty at all about the 2016 Cy Young Award voting. No, I am not. Not whatsoever. Um, a little bit of a quirk in his career, which I found interesting when he started out his career in Detroit. His first four seasons, he alternated 14 and 9 and 10 and 12 
win loss records 14 and 9 and 09 10 and 12 in 2010 14 and 9 in 2011 10 and 12 in 2012 and then the the, the streak kind of got uh, broken a little bit um in 2013 I do believe it was when he went 13 and 8 he was one win and one loss short of continuing the streak I was so freaking mad about that. But you know what? Rick Porcello. Rick Porcello is not bad. So there you go. Rick Porcello from the Detroit Tigers. 75 overall card is in. Perfect team. 23. Now, I saw a couple of you say a lot of names at the beginning of the stream that, that could be, you know, possible cards for this set that y'all might like. And you know what? I had to dig back into the Perfect Team 20 Wells to, gr to grant you all this next card as well. Because up next, we have for you a 76 overall Mike LaValier from the 1987 Pittsburgh Pirates. He is back. He lives again. 71 Babbitt, 5 power, 83 Avoy K, 69 contact, 54 gap power, and 53 I. Who Nelly. You look at the contact profile, but then your eyes kind of shift down to that defense over there at catcher. 91 catcher ability with 95 catcher arm this guy it will be a defensive stalwart behind the plate for you if you get this card he is absolutely insane and he can hit the ball pretty decently too 71 babbitt 5 power 83 avoid k we already went through that his v right splits though are very good 71 babbitt 5 power 87 avoid k 71 contact 53 gap power and 53 on the eye lots and lots of singles indeed not gonna get a whole lot of extra bases out of this guy not gonna get a whole lot of homers from this guy either but he's gonna get you some singles he's gonna get you some defense at catcher he is going to be a, a pretty good player for y'all maybe in silver tourneys and could possibly play in league at some of the lower levels if you're just starting out a team and you have this Mike Lavalier card. So there you go. In 1987, he hit 300 with a 377 on base and a 365 slugging. Hit just one homer on the year with 36 RBI in 121 games. And 1987 was the lone year in his career that he won the Gold Glove Award. And you know what kind of helped with that? You know, catching 45% of base runners on the base paths kind of helps you out a little bit with that. Oh my God, is it his birthday today? Hang on, hang on. Is it his birthday today? Holy crap, it is his birthday. Happy birthday to Mike Lavalier, who turns 62 today as well. So there you go. Mike Lavalier from the 1987 Pittsburgh Pirates in Perfect Team 23. Now, now our next card, you know, I kind of wanted to keep a theme with this next card after we had Mike Lavalier. And you know what? I figured, you know what? What, what kind of guys out there have the initials of M and L. Because, you know what, now now that we had Mike Lavalier, you know, I kind of wanted to keep it going for at least another card or so. You know, M, L, who could possibly be a really good baseball player that had the initials M, L? There's a lot of, there's a lot of ones out there. I mean, Manny Lee, Mickey Lolich, uh, Matt Lavallo, Miguel Labrera, Mickey Lantle, Matt Lawton. There's a lot of guys we could go with, but you know what? The one guy that I settled on was 79 overall, 78 overall, Mike Lowell 
from the Boston Red Sox peak card. There he is, Mike Lowell. And look at this hitting card right here. 53 BABIP, 80 power, 87 avoid K, 77 contact, 79 gap power, and 56 I. But look at the V left splits on this guy. 53 BABIP, 94 power, 93 avoid K, 84 contact, 71 gap power, and 63 on the eye. Oh man. This guy will be great V left in a lot of silver tournaments and possibly in league play if you guys are starting out, maybe doing a Red Sox steam team or something, need a third baseman. This guy is the man right here. Plus, he's actually pretty decent at defense too. 60 range, 94 error, 78 arm, and 64 on the turn double play. It can also be a little bit serviceable against righties as well, if you look at it close enough. Uh, 76 power, 86 avoid K, 74 contact, 82 gap power, 53 I. This is not a bad card whatsoever. In Mike Lowell's career from 1998 to 2010, he hit 279, 342, 464 with 223 home runs, 952 RBI. He was a four-time All-Star Silver Slugger Award winner in 2003. I believe that was the year he won it all with the Marlins, maybe? That was the year he won it all with the Florida Marlins. He was a gold glove in 2005 with the Marlins. And he finished 5th in MVP voting in 2007 with a 324 average, 21 homers, 120 RBI, and was World Series MVP that year as well. So there you go, 78 overall, Mike Lowell from the Boston Red Sox peak card. And by the way, if I look at, um, at my list here, the card that the, the year that this card is on is, I believe, 2007. So, pretty good stuff right there. Alrighty, let's move on to our next card of the evening. And it's actually a pretty good card right here. You know, I had to go back a ways for this one, you know. And you know what? I had to get my Tigers fandom in here somewhere. So we decided to go with 1967 Al Kaline from the Detroit Tigers. Right fielder, 84 overall. A pretty decent low gold card right here. 65 Babip, 76 power, 81 avoid K, 83 contact, 77 gap power, and 74 I. A very balanced card in the gold ranks. A little, you get a little bit of something VL, you get a little bit of something VR as well on the splits. And defensively, defensively, not bad at all in right field. 63 range, 54 error, and 90 on the outfield arm. He can play right field. He's qualified to learn first base and center field as well. Speed stealing and base running a little on the low side. 35 speed, 75 stealing, and 45 base running. Uh, you'll get a little more power against lefties. You're going to get a little more avoid K against righties. You're going to get a little more gap power against righties. The contact ratings kind of even out. 84 against left, 83 against right. And you're going to get about six more points in I against left than you will against righties as well. Um, in 1967, um, a pretty good year for K-Line. Probably not his best year. Not the best year of his career by any stretch of the imagination. Um, though those years would probably be like back in the, in the fifties, but this is a solid year for Al Kaline. 308, 411, 541 on the slash line, 25 homers, 78 RBI, had 83 walks to 47 strikeouts in this year. He was an all-star. He was a gold glove winner. He was fifth in AL MVP this year, had 14 outfield assists as well. So kind of, kind of good with the 90 arm right there. Had seven and a half war on the year. Third highest of his career. So pretty good stuff for all-star Al Kaline from the 1967 Detroit Tigers in perfect team.
23. Alrighty, so let's go now to the diamond levels. Let's go to the diamond levels now. And we're going to go a little bit, shall we say, a little bit local for, for you, boy. And we go with, oh, what's his overall? 94 overall, Matt Thornton from the 2010 Chicago White Sox. 97 stuff, 91 movement, 67 control. Look at the splits on this guy. 116 against lefties, 99 movement against lefties, and 72 control right there. This guy is a must-have for a lefty specialist in the bullpen. And let me tell you, he was absolutely nasty in his career. This guy was actually drafted by the Tigers in the 27th round of the 1995 MLB draft, but did not sign with the Tigers, instead going to Grand Valley State University in Allendale, Michigan, just outside of Grand Rapids, and was drafted in the first round, 22nd overall, by the Seattle Mariners in 1998. This guy is second all-time in, I believe, Major League Baseball in career holds with 182. Lone all-star season for Matt Thornton as well. Had a 161 ERA plus this year, 61 games, 267 ERA with a 214 FIP. 12 strikeouts per nine and three walks per nine as well. Yep, and Clashreen with the stats in the chat. In college, he was a starter at the D2 school with an 850 ERA and more walks than strikeouts. My goodness gracious. Oh, man. But you know what? A fun fact. Um, I have a little tiny bit of a connection to Matt Thornton, just tangentially. I actually went to high school with one of his cousins. And 2010 was, I believe, my first year of high school. So that was uh, that was pretty, uh, pretty cool when I learned that, hey, this person's related to a major league pitcher. Imagine my shock on that. So there you go. So a little bit of a, a sentimental choice in my set this this week. So Matt Thornton from the 2010 Chicago White Sox has a fastball slider changeup combo, by the way. Yeah, 2010 was my uh, freshman year of high school. So I was um, very young at that point. <laughs> Nico, not like my shock in hearing that you're only 27. Yeah, yeah, I kind of I kind of freaked Nico out about that. So, there you go. Matt Thornton from the 2010 Chicago White Sox in Perfect Team 23. All right. Now, now usually with these shows, we go in order of overall, but you know what? I had to step back a little bit for this one, and you'll see why in just a little bit. So, we're going to go down a little bit in overall. And we're going to stay in the AL Central. And we're going to go to 2007 Maglio Ordonez from the Detroit Tigers. 90 overall card right here. 87 Babip, 66 power, 76 avoid K, 95 contact, 83 gap, and 58 I as well a pretty nice low diamond card and he can absolutely rake against lefties as well nico do not mention the white Sox. he is a tiger through and through 89 babip 78 power 82 avoid k 103 contact 96 gap and 68 i against left-handed pitching and against righties, it's a little bit sketchy compared to his V left, but still kind of serviceable as well. 86 Babip, 62 power, 74 Voight K, 93 contact, 78 gap power, and 55 I as well. And defensively, you know what? He can technically play right field. 51 range, 89 error, 44 arm. He won't make a lot of errors out there. But uh, it's going to be an interesting getting to balls, pretty much. Um, speed stealing and base running, 
practically non-existent. 14 speed, 74 stealing, and 32 on the base running. In 2007, Maglio Ordonez had what I think a lot of people would consider to have a career year, hitting 363 with a 434 on base, a 595 slugging, pretty much the highest OPS and OPS plus in his career. Career high in RBI, career high in doubles as well. Finished second in MVP to freaking A-Rod. He was an all-star. He was a silver slugger. This guy had some pretty darn good years. And you know what? I think the biggest memory that any Tigers fan has of Maglio Ordonez was in 2006. ALCS. Two runners on. Couple of outs in the bottom of the ninth inning of Game 4. Tigers up 3-0 in the series. Whacking a 1-0 pitch over the left field fence to go to the World Series. Fun fact about that. My mom actually technically called that shot. You know, so so the, 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 the Fox broadcast had a graphic that showed up after the first pitch that showed uh, Maglio Ordonez's career numbers against against the pitcher. And, like, you know, she pretty much said, you know what? Maglio is due for a hit. And you know what? Hit he did. 25,000 perfect. Actually, no, this would be a 75,000 point uh, call your shot call right here for my mom. So, you know what? Maybe maybe if she ever plays perfect team, which she won't, by the way. Um, I just gift her 75,000 perfect points or something just because, you know, Magli Ordonez in the game. Pretty cool stuff. And then, as y'all know, the Tigers uh, forgot how to do pickoffs. And the Tigers pitching forgot how to uh, play baseball in the 2006 World Series. I do not want to relive that. With 2007 Maglio Ordonez from the Detroit Tigers. But you know what? We talk about the 2006 ALCS. And the walk-off homer. But you know who we hit it off of. Our next card. 98 overall. Houston Street peak card. From the Oakland Athletics. 77 stuff. 97 movement. And 88 control. Pretty pretty interesting stuff right here, but this guy is a very splitty card right here. A lot of movement against righties here. 83 stuff, 105 movement, and 91 control as well. Slider, changeup, and sinker combo on this guy right here. 16 stamina and 21 on the hold runners. And a perfect... Ground ball to fly ball tendency of a fly ball pitcher can throw 95 to 97 miles per hour. Houston Street actually had a pretty decent career, all things considered. He, you know, he might have been just maybe a tiny bit rattled by the ALCS walk-off in my mind. But in, from 2005 to 2017, Houston Street had 680 innings pitched, a 295 ERA, 324 career saves, and a six and 665 career strikeouts. He was rookie of the year in 2005 as a reliever for the A's. He was an all-star in 2012, I believe when he was pitching for the San Diego Padres. And 2014 when he was pitching in San Diego. And I, and I believe he got traded to LA at one point during the season. So interesting stuff there. And of course, as we all know, he gave up the walk-off homer to Maglio Ordonez in the 2006 ALCS. So that's how I know him. And that's how I will always remember him. Houston Street from the Oakland A's in Perfect Team 23. Also, uh, don't don't pitch this guy against lefties, though. You know, 69 stuff, 88 movement, 85 control. While technically serviceable-ish, might be better suited to face righties. Just saying. 
Except except for Maglio. Except probably his, his stats probably hypothetically go down if he faces the Maglio card. So, uh, shh. <laughs> That's, at, um, for legal reasons, that is a joke. Alrighty. We got a couple more cards for you all tonight. And you know what? We had to keep the Tigers theme going a little bit. So you know what? I decided, you know what? Let, let's find a Tiger card here. That, you know what? People might not expect. And here he is. We're going to the perfect ranks with 100 overall. Actually, no. Hang on. Hang on. I forgot. There's another card here. Randy Johnson. <laughs> 98 overall from the 1995 Seattle Mariners. My bad. My bad. Pump the brakes. Pump the brakes. 95. 1995 Randy Johnson. 98 overall. How did I forget the third Randy? Oh, well. Okay. Let, let's, let's try this again. Your next card is 98 overall. Randy Johnson. From the 1995 Seattle Mariners. Hey, that's my birth year. 1995. Randy Johnson. This guy's some big, big stuff right here. 138 stuff, 86 movement, and 62 control. 148 stuff against lefties. 96 movement against lefties. 69 control against lefties. And kind of serviceable against righties. 134 stuff, 83 movement, and 60 control. If you want strikeouts, this guy is your guy right here. Fastball, slider, curveball, changeup, sinker, splitter. 106 slider. Absolutely insane. Plus, he has 97 stamina and 74 on the hold runners. Now, 1995 was a dominant year. For Randy Johnson, then again, he had a lot of dominant years during this time. 18 and 2 record with a 2.48 ERA, 12.3 strikeouts per nine, 2.7 walks per nine, and a 193 ERA plus. Had a 208 FIP, which was the lowest of his career. Won the Cy Young Award in 1995. Finished sixth in AL MVP and was an All Star. In 1995, for the Seattle Mariners, who won the American League Division Series against the New York Yankees that year. That was a fun series right there. So there you go. Randy Johnson from the 1995 Seattle Mariners is in. Perfect team. 23. All right. So now that we had that little uh, out of the way, now I can talk about this next card it is a 100 overall Detroit Tiger and it is Johnny Bassler peak card from the Detroit Tigers 80 Babbitt 5 power 97 avoid K 82 contact 65 gap and 91 I little bit better against righties than he is against lefties not bad at all. If you're looking for a pretty good Tigers catcher that can that can hit some singles for you, can get on base, play some defense a little bit, this guy is your guy. 80 Babbitt, 5 power, 97 avoid K, 82 contact, 65 gap, and 91 I with 84 catcher ability and 87 catcher arm as well. <laughs> that power is so bad, you'd think it was one of my pitchers. Look, I mean, he's no Tony Cloninger at the plate, let's be honest here. Uh, but this guy can seriously bunt as well. 101 sack bunt, 85 bunt for hit as well. Now, in Johnny Bassler's career, he had a actually pretty good career. 304, 416, 361 in his career with 319 RBI. He finished in the top seven MVP three straight seasons from 1922 to 1924. 
and has the third highest on-base percentage in Major League history for catchers. That 416 rate, pretty darn good. Plus, he threw out 46% of base runners trying to steal in his career. So, pretty good stuff right there. Johnny Bassler, uh, let me see if there's any other things I can conjure up. No, I didn't want to. There. there, that's the one I want. Yep, so he played from 1913 and 1914 with Cleveland before coming to Detroit in 1921, playing until 1927. Didn't hit under 279 with the Tigers. So this guy, pretty good. And never had an on-base under 400 with the Tigers as well. That's solid hitting right there. So there you go. Johnny Bassler from the Detroit Tigers in perfect team. 23. Now, we have one more card from you for you tonight. And you know what? This card has a little something to do with my birthday on August 15th. Now, it also, my birthday this year, coincides with the anniversary of a historic happening in Major League Baseball which I think uh, quite a few of you might recall. And no, I'm not... And this was on the same day that the Tigers, for whatever reason, somehow acquired Delman Young, but that's not... That's not the guy that, uh, that we're going to be talking about today. No, no, no. This event happened in the Pacific Northwest. 10 years ago today, well, not 10 years ago today, but on August 15th, 2012, on my 17th birthday, the king claimed his throne and threw a freaking perfect game. You know who I'm talking about. We have for you 100 overall peak Felix Hernandez from the Seattle Mariners. 103 stuff, 86 movement, and 90 control. 109 stuff against righties, 86 movement, and 90 control against righties as well. Fastball, slider, curveball, changeup, and sinker combo right here. The king has arrived. 92 stamina, 56 hold runners. Ground ball pitcher, 96 to 98 miles per hour. Goodness gracious, what a card we have for y'all tonight. We started with Kingman and we end with the king. From 2005 to 2019, Felix Hernandez might have been one of the best starting pitchers in Major League Baseball. 169 and 136 career record with a 342 ERA, a 117 ERA plus. Of course, he threw the perfect game on August 15th, 2012. Won the Cy Young Award in 20 time. He finished six times in the top 10 during his career. This guy was as dominant a pitcher in the 2010s as just about everybody, anybody, in the game. And he was a six-time All-Star as well in his career. Felix Hernandez in perfect team 23. Should have won more Cy Youngs? Exactly. Definitely, definitely an underrated pitcher, but my God. God, was he good when he was on for the Mariners. So there y'all go. That is the set. We had Al Kaline, Dave Kingman, Felix Hernandez, Houston Street, Johnny Bassler, Magli Ordonez, Matt Thornton, Mike Lavalier, Mike Lowell, Randy Johnson, Rick Porcello, and my guy, Tony Cloninger.
There you go. All right. Before we head out for the evening, let's take a look at the tournament standings. And we take and we congratulate last week's tournament top 10. DR Sox and the Walking Dead taking first place in daily traditional tournaments with 206 points. Red Eclipse and the Palatine Plutos finishing second with 185 points. DR Sox, sorry about that. Third place was RDT24 in the 90s expansions with 171 points. Ace Rutherford, Bluebird Silver, Warhawk, three Galoid, PJ Sleeves, Yonk 2, and Frogert rounding out the top 10 in last week's daily traditional tournaments. And in the weekly traditional tournaments, Jay Rooney 325 and the Hudson Railers with 123 points finishing on top in those standings. Cookie finishing in second with 110 points, Baugh 5 with 103 points. Polycarp, Ludwig, Mr. Audit, Isadavo, Tom Caudillo, Locke Robster, and Aster31 finishing out the top 10 in the weekly traditional tournaments. In the Perfect Draft Tournaments, AMR 512 and the Dallas Troubadours taking first place in the Daily Perfect Draft Tournaments last week with 66 points. Bahoot in the California Halos with 59 points. Finishing in second, Play Ball 2020. And the Toledo Mighty Hens with 59 points, rounding out the top three. Augie, IML Owl, John Sork, Delamo, Don, Semi Mango, Jeff Walmart, and Mogsy rounding out the top 10. In the weekly perfect drafts last week, Matt Olson season in the fighting Matt Olsons with 35 points, finishing in first place. Ale Simeon with 34 points, just one point behind, finishing in second. Rob Wooten, 136, and the Bartram Park Ballplayers with 31 points, rounding out the top three. Preacher Boy, 21, IMASH Dingers, Hakuna, 357, Eerie GM, F. Jellyas, 3, LCK, 1717, and Seagram, 99, rounding out the top 10. As for this week's top 10, here's how they are now as of the morning of August 18th. Hey, that's today. Red Eclipse is in first place with 125 points in the Daily Traditional Ace Rutherford in second place with 112 points. Chris Wheeler, 81, and Distant third with 77. Bluebird Silver, Warhawk 3, San Mames, Randall D, Galoy, Isadafo, and Maxfire 5 rounding out the top 10. And in the weekly traditional tournaments, Glevin, 37-37, and the Oakwood Wolverines, Snailman, and Ball 5 tied at the top with 45 points. Bahoot, Sand Mames, Jake P316, CF Genesis, Bluehead, and KC86, and my whiff it, rounding out the top 10. And for the perfect draft tournament, Cedarites and the Hartford Dark Blues in first place with 49 points. Diamond Fever and the Diamond Fevers in second with 42 points. Mr. Monty Fenn and the Calvin Ball All Stars in third with 41 points. Buckeye, Crash 1007, Fred Beretta, Philo, CBR 2018, Ma Whiffin, and Uber Rees. Rounding out the top 10 in the Daily Perfect Draft so far. And in the Weekly Perfect Draft tournaments, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 tied at the top with 25 points. And then Connolly 206 C, Jedi Guy 78, MJP 31, and CHR GRM rounding out the top 10 with 20 points. All right, guys, that's going to do it for tonight. On this week in Perfect Team, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate y'all being here. As always, I will see you next week for some more fantastic content here on This Week in Perfect Team. I will see you tomorrow night for the This Week in Perfect Team Friday Showdown. And guess what, guys? Cards are live right now. Go get them. Have a great night, everybody. DishNet34, signing out.